people are the people that, that take what they've learned in class and apply it to something that interests them. Um, but the, it doesn't help. I mean, it doesn't. The classes are very interesting anyway. That everything you you learn at Full Sail is uh, has a game development focus. So if you take a creative writing class at Full Sail, um, you know your creative writing is writing video game scripts, uh, video game plots, and and doing character development in video games. And it, it, it's it's really awesome. And there's a lot of like-minded people there. And if it if it suits your learning style, then it, it's a great place to go to school. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So I love these assets. I just forwarded you some updated assets from C5. So we can always pull those over as well. Yeah, let's do that. And the, the fruit, by the way, in the Bioshock Infinite um, artwork that you're seeing here on on the screen, um, the fruit is actually the murder of crows symbol from the game. It's a little tough to see because it is only 15 by 15 pixels, but but I still totally appreciate it. It looks awesome. So I'm just uh, moving C5 stuff in there. Then we're going to check out C5's updated graphics. And again, let us know if you guys want to see something here that, um, that we haven't done yet. We've done a couple of things. We've had people create obstacles in the game. We've had the snake get faster and faster, uh, just incrementally on its own, or every time it eats a, a fruit, it'll get faster, things like that. Um, we've had fruit only appear in corners, which is very evil. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Look at the new, uh, the new border. I like it. Yeah. That looks so neat. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to put these up on our site and have people play them. Yeah. It's so cool. And again, this stuff is really easy for you guys to do too. Just download our source code, make your own art image files, and just plug them into the game. And you can make all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's just so easy to, like, we've got all these different image files here, but all you really need to do is add, you, you could just add one image file, just uh, right here where we've got uh, bio background or C5 background. Uh, just do my background, whatever you want to name it. And then stick it over here, uh, like how we've got CGD C5 bio, and um, and it will appear in the game. Just run the game after that, and um, and it'll be in there. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, we have a couple other questions for you, Carrie. Um, specifically, what languages do you use, and what is your favorite language to use? What languages do I use? Well, I use uh, C++. Um, uh, I use a lot of C++. Almost every uh, everything uh, for a game at work, I, I'm, I work in uh, C++. Um, I do some UI stuff with ActionScript as well. Um, one of my favorite, well, my favorite language to work with outside of work is C Sharp, like we're doing in, uh, in CGD. Um, yeah. Uh, but C++ is a very good language to learn if you're going to get into game development. Um, that's if, if you only learn one language, it should probably be C++. Yeah. Um, and what was it? Uh, what was my favorite language? Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite um, one? Yeah, C Sharp probably is my favorite language. Um, it's like C++, but uh, a little more forgiving, I think. Um, and I, I just love making games for for uh, for my Xbox. Like with XNA and C Sharp, you can make games for your Xbox. You make games for your Windows Phone. You make games for your PC. Um, C Sharp is also a really good uh, language for doing tools development, and uh, I, I really like tools development. I like making level editors and and animations and uh, animation editors and things like that. And um, 
I, I showed you, didn't I, Kim, the, uh, the cadet banner creator that I made? Yeah, I, you did. <laughs> I didn't want to put that online because I don't think everyone should have a cadet banner. No. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, but that was written in C Sharp as well. Uh, that, that's another use that you can do for C Sharp is uh, just making a tool that, uh, that creates images or creates assets. Uh, C Sharp is really good for that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So we have, I think we have time to do one more um, modification to the game, yeah. if you don't mind, uh, Carrie. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Evil Zoe uh, in chat has asked that we add different types of fruit. Um, different types of fruit, yeah. Right, and they have to do different things, like some will speed up the snake, some will slow down the snake, some will make the snake even bigger or smaller, things like that. And they can have different colors to represent you know, the different... Uh, things that the fruit will do. Can we try yeah. and do that? Yeah, we can give that a try. Let's do it. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so what we'll what we'd want to do is instead of having just one fruit, uh, was our fruit? Uh, our fruit is down here somewhere. Yeah. So instead of having just the one fruit, we'll make an array of fruits. It's telling me that I can't change the code while I'm running the game, so I'll stop the game. Before we do this, let's rename it to locations. It makes more sense that way. And we'll make this an array. And then pretty much everywhere we use this, we've got to make some changes now. Um, OK, so yeah, this is where we're drawing the fruit. Um, it's less than. Um, I'll start out just drawing more, multiple fruits, and then we'll we'll have them have different properties. They'll they'll have different effects uh, on the uh, on the snake. But we'll start out just drawing multiple fruits. Eyes lesson fruit locations length. Okay, and uh, let's find the next guy. So uh, we do the collect fruit here. So um, we want to check to see if you've collected any fruit. In X, why did I do X? I meant I. <laughs> <laughs> I is just a common variable that programmers use uh, in loops. Sub i dot x and fruit locations sub i dot y. Then collect the fruit. OK, so placing new. Okay, so when we place the new fruits, um, okay, so this is where it could get a bit more complicated. Um, okay, what we'll do is um, instead of uh, doing our test on fruit locations, um, we'll make up a, a new variable. Um, we don't need this right now. Seems like you're adding a whole lot of code to this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit of a mess, but uh, it's not too too bad 
So what exactly are you adding right right now in this? So area? right now, um, I'm making it so that when you um, when you collect a fruit, it gives you all new random fruits. Oh, uh, gotcha. Wait, if you just collect one, then it yeah. randomizes everything else? Oh, wow. Yeah, because the next step is going to be to make all the fruits different. So, um, uh, so rather than just have you collect all, like only generate fruits when uh, when they're empty, uh, we want to uh, we want all the fruits to have different effects. So we probably just want to spawn just whole new fruits. Um, okay, so we need to add this into the array. So I equals new fruit. And I think that's the last reference of it. OK, so now what we want to do is create our array. Um, actually, we could do that just where it, where it's uh, where we actually create the variable. So how many fruits should we have? Should we go with uh, three fruits at first? Yeah. All right, Oop, three. Unless the chat wants something different. <laughs> so now, hopefully, uh, what will happen is I'll run the game, and we'll have three fruits. And if you collect any one of them, um, you can it'll spawn. You'll get the point, and I'll do three new ones. Oh, look! There they are. The game just got really easy because you don't have to go to the edges. Is usually going to be oh, I died. What? Yeah. How did you die? That's a that's another interesting bug. <laughs> How did that happen? Let me, uh, it's funny we hit that now, because right down, let's see. Oh, it's a bug that you, uh, that you call out in your code? Yep. It's actually this bug right here. That's the problem. I won't go into it right now, because it is pretty rare that this happens, but uh, this is, um, this is a, the bug. We just hit this bug here. So it's I knew about it. I did know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're at this point where you hit one fruit, and then uh, the others then all change as well. You get your point, and uh, the others change. So now what we can do is we can change our collection function to do different things. Inside our collect fruit, um, let's change this to take an int. OK, and now if I build, it's going to complain because it doesn't know what this is. So I'm going to I in there. And now it should know what that is. OK, so when we collect a fruit, we'll, um, we'll pass in, we'll, we'll let it know what fruit we collected. Uh, what I'm going to do over in the CGD fruit, if I open this guy up, it's just a green rectangle. I'm going to change it to a white rectangle. So all our fruits are going to be not, not black, white. <laughs> there we go. A white rectangle. So all our fruits are going to be white right now. Yeah. So then what I can do down in the draw is our draw. Let's see. 